Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here. Welcome back to another episode of Live the Life with Yours Truly. Target, I'm uh, uh, target audience, and of course, Augustus Mock of the New York Rangers. Man, it's going to be hard to say that. But we're into things now. We're into the thick of things. We're going to be simming one, playing one, getting into it all. Currently, if you look at the numbers, um, we lead every category. Look at 11, 11, 11. Oh my goodness, Augustus Mock. Just a beast. Six goals and five assists twice. He's unbelievable. He's a, he's a beast, man. All right, so we're going to sim the first game. See how it goes. First period, 3 0. We're up. Second, 5 0. We got a goal. And the third, 6 0. The final. JT Miller with a goal on Kadob in there. And let's see here. Looks like a goal. And that's it. Just the one goal there. Rick Nash gets the assist. Rick Nash had a fantastic game. One, two, three points for good old Rick Nash. All right. Good numbers there so yeah i mean like we've been playing pretty well so far we've had huge numbers obviously leading the league in points that's what we wanted to do and uh it's been fun it's fun having augustus mock back it really is he he is such a i don't know there's something about him there's just something about him he's just such a gentleman such a gentleman all right taking on the san jose san jose Sharks. first period one one score or second period three two so we're gonna jump in here with a lead hopefully we can hold on to it we are currently playing the second line, 87 overall we are. We're better than Derek Stepan. I think they just want to try and keep the power forwards apart because they've got Rick Nash up there. And they've got Derek Stepan and Mark Zucar Matt Zuccarello. And then I've got Haglin and Mark. I got San Luis. So that's really a pretty fair trade-off. I think if we get much higher in overall, like if we end up at an 88, I think that they'll give us that top line. But right now at 87, solid, solid. I like it. We're going to do well, especially with San Luis. I mean, the guy's a beast. He's so fast. And, I mean, Matt Zuccarello is a good player, too. He's super fast as well. They're small, right? That's what they do. They gotta, you got to do something. got to just skate around. All right, here we go. So, how about them Oilers? Hey, winning the draft lottery. Goodness gracious, everybody's going to lose their mind. Everybody lost their minds on that one. Everybody lost their minds because the Oilers ended up winning. And uh, I didn't expect it. I honestly did not ex expect to see that at all. It was completely... I, it was just crazy. It was an unbelievable moment as an Oilers fan to get that. And I know, it's like, well, you guys celebrate losing like nobody else. And I realize that. I'll be the first person to tell you the Oilers suck. And also be the first person to tell you that they didn't deserve that pick. Or that, that lottery, that draft lottery. They don't deserve it. But am I ha disappointed it happened? Absolutely not. That was It was amazing. It was an absolutely amazing experience. And it's going to be great to have that guy on our team. Oh, San Luis just backed off. Of course he did. And, uh, I mean, it's just good things for the team. I mean, really. It's unbelievable. I compare it, honestly, to... Uh, I think there's nothing to compare it to. There really is nothing to compare it to. But, so when you take a look at this, like the way they've touted Connor McDavid versus Sidney Crosby or even, to some extent, Wayne Gretzky. And I seriously doubt... Oh, God, look at Derek Brassard. Hopefully he can figure out... There you go. Um, they compare him to Wayne Gretzky and Connor... And, uh, obviously, Sidney Crosby, more importantly, I think... And that he's bet he's been better than Sidney Crosby. So let's say for a second that his name that he's as good as Sidney Crosby, or he, yeah, let's just say as good as Sidney Crosby. Okay. So when we saw Sidney Crosby step into the league, he was a force to be reckoned with. I mean, right away the guy started producing points. Did they make the playoffs? Absolutely not. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh, it almost didn't go in. There you go. Did they make the playoffs? No, but they made it the next year. And then you know they won the Stanley Cup the year after, or whatever it was. Anyway, let's say for a second, you know. Wayne Gretzky, or sorry, Sidney Crosby actually had some amazing players to play with at that point. So highly skilled offensive players. That's something he didn't have. He was kind of it. I mean, he did have Mario Lemieux. He did have Mario Lemieux. And, I mean, there were a lot of there were a lot of veterans on that team, aging veterans. I mean, the team was pretty much done with what they had there. They were looking to rebuild, and that's what they got. I mean, they had Marc-Andre Fleury from the previous draft, and then they also had uh, Jenny Malcolm. But they were both really young. Everybody was really young. So there wasn't much expected at that point. And they also couldn't produce at the same rate. You look at what Connor McDavid walks into with the Oilers. You, I mean, Sidney Crosby can make anybody look good, right? He's just like Joe Thornton. He can make anybody look good. Look, I mean, Chris Kunitz has been widely regarded as one of the best wingers for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Why? Because he saw a lot of ice time with Sidney Crosby. Plain and simple. He saw tons of ice time with Sidney Crosby. So... He had that ability to make anybody around him better. That's Connor McDavid. Now, imagine for a second if Sidney Crosby was given a player like Jamie Benn or was given a, a real goal scorer, you know, Taylor Hall, Alex Ovechkin, something like that. 
Can you imagine how many points Sidney Crosby would score? How many points that, that other winger would score? It's mind-boggling. And that's the kind of situation the Oilers are finding themselves in. You've got Connor McDavid feeding legitimate left-wing sniper in Taylor Hall. And you've got him potentially feeding Jordan Eberle, who we all know can score. And then, I mean, even if he doesn't do that, he's got Neil Yakupov. And, I mean, Neil Yakupov can finish. He can. He can finish. He's had a, a tough time lately. Oh, good save there, Neil. He's had a tough time lately. And I get that. And people are doubting him and stuff like that. But uh, to the same extent, give him some time. But you put him with Connor McDavid, and all of a sudden the guy looks like a boss. He looks like an amazing player. Players in Pittsburgh, players in Chicago, um, players even in San Jose get an incredible stock rise because of who they play with. Thomas Hurdle, good example. Kid's pretty good, but he also plays with some fantastic players. Patrick Marleau, and not to mention, of course, Joe Thornton. Those guys are unbelievable. So they benefit from playing with them. I mean, Jonathan Chichu scored 50 goals playing with um, Joe Thornton. 50 goals. Playing with Joe Thornton. We gotta get some shots on net here, by the way. Oh, he scores! It's in the net! I didn't expect that! What a shot! But, yeah, he scored 50 goals. 50 goals. What's Jonathan Chichu doing now? Rotten in the AHL. So it just goes to show you how big a player like Connor McDavid can be. And that he's stepping into Edmonton with the situation that's going on there. It's phenomenal. The Oilers are truly stepping in to be having Sidney... You've got, I mean, you've got basically, let's say Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, and let's say Nugent Hopkins, for lack of a better comparable, is of Jenny Malkin, all right? For lack of a better... Oh, Zuccarello. For lack of a better comparable. Whoa, what the hell? Oh, it's in the net! Oh, my God, bottle and everything. This thing's a runaway. So, yeah, for lack of a better comparison, you've got, you know, Malkin as Nugent Hopkins. Now, t Edmonton has players that uh, Pittsburgh doesn't. Oh, beauty. Taylor Hall. They don't have Taylor Hall, right? They don't have a Nail Yak. Well, they have a Nail Yak. Well, I see Patrick Hornfist and Nail Yak Bob are currently at the same point, but Nail Yak Bob has, Bob has more upside. Um, you know, even Leandro Seidel has good promise, right? But again, if we're talking roster players and who's going to play in the NHL next year, I mean, I guess we could. We could say Leandro Seidel. Can you imagine a, a three punch of those three? I mean, that's not unlike Pittsburgh when they had Jordan Stahl. Really is not unlike Pittsburgh at all. The only thing is, the Oilers have better they have better wingers. you got Taylor Hall. you got Jordan Eberle. I would say that Taylor Hall and Jordan Eberle, in terms of their goal scoring ability anyway, well, Taylor Hall for sure is better than any winger that Pittsburgh has. Right? I would say that. Their centers are strong, but their their wingers are weak. Oh, yeah, I'm to say. They only play well because of their centers they play with. I mean, if Jenny Malkin and, and, and Sidney Crosby are two elite players, a way, way ahead of the pack, you know? And so to have that down the middle can be huge, and it makes a huge difference having a pivot like that. So, I mean, a one, two, three punch, if you count Dracidal, if he ends up being as good as he can be, is an amazing proposition. I mean, he was supposed to be our second-line center, and now he's going to be boop, bumped down to the third-line center. Like, that's the type of depth the Oilers all of a sudden find themselves with with this really lucky, really, really lucky pick. Now, in addition to that, we can kind of talk about the reaction around the league towards it. Number one, we can officially agree that the lottery is not rigged because in what world would the NHL want to see the Edmonton Oilers of all clubs, of all franchises, in what world would you want them to get all the top picks? Pff, easy goal on that one. What world would you want that? They're too good. And not to mention, Edmonton's not a money maker. You know who's a money maker? Toronto. I mean, they are the epicenter of hockey, right? I mean, when the biggest it's the biggest city in Canada. That's part of it. Doesn't mean they're the best the best team or they have the best fans. I'm not saying that, but they're the epicenter of hockey. You can't deny that. That's where, you know, Hockey Net Canada is broadcast from. It's it's our major trading uh, location. It's, you know, it's our New York, basically, right? So when you think about it like that, I don't know why he went down low. When you think about it like that, Toronto would have been a great spot for him to be. Hockey, biggest sport in Canada. Come on, jeez. Hockey's the biggest sport in Canada. The focus is completely on the Toronto Maple Leafs there. And then you take a player, Sidney Crosby-esque, and put him into the spotlight in Toronto, you do great things for the sport. Also, other places to go that would be great things for the sport would be Arizona. We all know what Sidney Crosby did for Pittsburgh. 
and we definitely all know what Gretzky did for Los Angeles. He made hockey happen in California. I mean, without Wayne Gretzky, you would not have the dominance you do in California. I mean, you think about the three California teams, Anaheim, San Jose, and LA. Those are three of the best teams in the league year after year. You know? So, it's interesting what... You know, it's it's interesting to see that, and it's also nice to have that clarity saying, like, no, there's no way they would rig it so that the Oilers end up with the fourth first overall pick in six years. There's no way. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, the only two players we missed out on were Nathan McKinnon and Aaron Eckblad. Those are the only two players you can think of since Taylor Hall that the Oilers have missed out on. Oh, my God. Are we still... Oh, this is four goals. Four goals in 83 All-Star games. So that's... Uh, I, I wish you could just skip it. I don't know why I have to watch Wayne Gretzky flap his... We were talking about you a minute ago, but flap your wrinkly, Botoxed face. I mean, he's Botox, no doubt about it. Look at this. There's no way. The guy's in his 50s, man. Like, you are literally got to be... Have some wrinkles, and he's pretty smooth up top. He was wrinkly as a player. He's Botox as shit. I don't trust him. That lip isn't moving at all. Anyway... So, yeah, I mean, it's exciting as an Oilers fan, but uh, anyway, yeah, we talked to, sorry, Arizona. If he went to Arizona, what kind of a, a impact he would have had on the desert, right? Maybe we would have seen more teams popping up down south because of that. Would it have been good for hockey? Probably. Am I happy it happened in Edmonton? More so. That's just the way it is. It's the way it is as an Oilers fan. You, you take what you can get. And a lot of it now, there's a lot of pressure on the Oilers at this point. Um, I hope they liked it. You're great in this one. Standing on the shoulders of Giants. That's good. Big night for Martin St. Louis. Without him, we'd be in trouble. Let's do that. Perfect. So, uh, sorry, what was I saying? Shoot. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of pressure now on the Oilers. Hold on, let's sim this game. First period. 0-0. Zero, zero. Second. 2-1. And third, 4-1. And we got a goal in this one. I don't know if we got an assist. I think that everybody oh, my God. It's still going to do it because we ended up with that. I hope it doesn't do it again. But, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the Oilers now when you think about it. We have to perform. We have to win. If the Oilers don't make the Stanley Cup, or don't make the playoffs next year, there's going to be a lot of people wondering what the hell is going on. I mean, they're going to say, you got Connor McDavid, for God's sake. You got you got Taylor Hall, you got Ryan Nugent, you got Neil Yakubov, you got Jordan Eberle. Just for forwards. I mean, if you want to count Justin Schultz, who's been rather disappointing, sure, go ahead and do it. But the team is on a whole different level now. And... It's unfair, in my opinion, that it's like this. It really is. Because once they start clicking, if they, and I hope they do, but once they start clicking, it'll be unstoppable. It, it's going to be insane. It's going to be insane. And I'm not just saying that because I'm an Oilers fan. If this happened in Calgary, if the same talent was in Calgary, I'd be saying the exact same thing. Oh, is it glitched out again? Stupid thing. Because we sim New Jersey, right? Did we not just sim them? Yeah, we sim them and it's glitched out. And I can't do anything about it. Stupid, stupid Gretzky. All right, well, you know what? We'll cop we'll stop it there. I know we only played one game, but by the time we get back in and get it all done, it's going to take forever. So I'll, I'll go take care of this elsewhere. This is so dumb that it glitches out. So, guys, thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. Until next time, I'm Target Audience, and I'll catch you guys out on the ice.